Am I the asshole here for not consoling my boyfriend because I make more money? Reddit, I need a gut check if I'm the asshole or not. I make a good deal of money, which I know people will say I'm the asshole already, but I live a very modest lifestyle. My monthly budget is 4k a month, and most months I profit 30k. I'm self-employed, so sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Next month, minor flex, because I'm anonymous and I can, it'll be around 80k pre-tax. Woohoo! I have a boyfriend, and we've been dating for 5 months. He's a good guy, but more traditional than I've ever dated before. He works as an assistant manager in a farming shop, paying $15 an hour. We are both in our mid-30s, and live in the arse end of nowhere. I only moved here to be close to my niece and nephew. No, he doesn't know what I make. We've only been dating a few months, and I'm private about how much I'm squirreling away. I drive an older Kia, bought a standard 3-2 house last year, but have almost paid it off. The issue is, he saw one of my invoices to a vendor pop up on my notifications. The bill was about 5k. He was shocked that I was paying that much. I told him it was the cost of doing business, and he was like, must be nice to drop twice of what a normal person makes a month on business. I'm usually water off a duck's back when it comes to conflict, so I told him that it'd be nice if I didn't have to pay that bill at all. He dropped it, but I was getting a vibe from him the last few days. He seemed distant. I visited at his place and asked him what was wrong, and I guess seeing me pay someone $5,000 sent him on a complete spiral. He's trying to figure out how he can be a man when I'm off paying other men more than he makes. <laughs> insecurity batman what's going on i did not like the implications of that like i'm a hooker or something and asked him if he freaks out on farmers who drop thousands on equipment he said it was different and asked how much i make he hasn't asked before which was a little on me because i always give the impression that what i make isn't that impressive i had a bad feeling so i lied and told him 120k which is officially my salary take hi irs <laughs> If you know what s are, you have an idea what I mean. Anyway, he burst into tears. I think if I was nicer, I should have consoled him or something. I know he's feeling like a loser, which he's not. He has a cool job in my opinion, and he's super knowledgeable about farm stuff, which I find interesting. He's a pillar in the community because we're surrounded by ranches, and he knows everyone, and again, I find it really cool but he was upset that I see more money on the regular than he sees in a year. I may have dropped the ball a bit here and told him he's going to have to find a way to be okay with not being the provider, and then he just got out of his house. I just couldn't figure out a way to make him feel better without lying more or making myself small. I guess I could have told him that working in a farm store is super effing manly or something, but I don't know. It's easy to think of these things afterward. My guess is it's some early midlife crisis, but I resent that it's coming at my expense. That because I'm doing well, he feels bad. If I found out that he secretly had a lot of family money, I'd be really happy and glad for him. But no, learning I could cover a $5,000 bill for my own business made him feel like less of a man to the point that he had to throw shade on me. That's a him problem. I'm still kind of pissed about that. I don't know, I'm also coming from a place of super privilege because it's been a few years since I've had to think about bills, and I don't care what people say, that changes you. So am I the asshole? And also, what do I do now? In the comments, not the asshole. You are not compatible. He's always going to have a problem with you earning more than him, which is pretty sad in this day and age that men have an issue with this. Eventually, if the relationship progressed, you would have to disclose what it really is. If he's reacting like this now, imagine what that would be like. And OP says, Yeah, that was a concern when he was freaking out over the 5k bill. I was thinking that his head would explode if he saw the quarterly tax bill that I made a week ago. Someone else says, Based on your post, my first thought was that this guy didn't even understand the difference between gross and net profits. Just because you drop 5k on a bill to be paid doesn't mean that's what's going to your personal account. He also doesn't seem to understand the volatility of operating your own business. As long as he shows up and does his job, he has security. 
you could be doing everything right and one day lose your business to a fickle market. And OP says, and how? There is a reason I'm living on so little while making so much. Dumbass little tech bros are actively trying to create AIs to make me redundant. Meanwhile, people will always need food as a farmer. Not if we make AI images of food and send the farmers out of business. Now, <laughs> who's going to buy the rights to my idea? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Someone else says, Not the asshole. His inferiority complex is not your problem. You shouldn't have to diminish yourself to make him feel good about himself. He should be proud of you. He should be pushing you to be the best version of you and vice versa. If he hadn't been snooping, he wouldn't have found out. If he hadn't asked intrusive questions, he wouldn't know how much you make. If he hadn't had a tantrum, there wouldn't be a problem. If he wants to be the provider, he should find someone who wants to be dependent on him financially. Do not ever dull your shine to make an insecure asshole feel better about himself. You're incompatible. And Grand Maleo says, not the asshole. I was a blue collar worker. The usual reaction to a wife who made more than my male co-workers was, now I don't have to work overtime. It was rare that it bothered them. The minority that were bothered by it ended up divorced. And yeah, I think that comment to me kind of hits on the heart of the issue. Rich husband or rich wife, you know, now I don't have to work overtime. That is the sensible reaction to this. They still want to be your partner. They still love you for you, regardless of your income. Your partner isn't going to your face saying, hey, you're poor and I'm richer than you. I think OP's partner in this um, situation is ascribing the wrong intent to OP's kind of obfuscation of their income. From my opinion, it seems as though he thinks she is looking down on him, she has something to hide, she's doing this for nefarious reasons. Now he feels bad that the cat's out of the bag and he can't be the provider that he wants to be, as he has said. But really, if I were in OP's shoes, I just don't want gold diggers in my life. I don't want people knowing private information about my finances because only people I know I can trust should know those things. And if people find out about those things, I'm going to have the whole town asking for a handout from me. That trust gets built over time. It's unfortunate that he's very insecure about this situation. Man or woman, you know, either are going to have the same reaction from me. I'm not going to say, oh, OP's partner is a woman. Oh, we need to feel really bad for her. OP's a horrible person as a man. Like, no. This just shows to me that those two are fundamentally incompatible. They can be compatible if they have a sit down together and discuss this and be like, hey, I feel like you overreacted. Can we have some sense and sensibility back, please? But as it stands, not the asshole OP. And now onto the updates. So long story short, my boyfriend of five months who doesn't make a lot found out I make a hell of a lot he makes around 30k a year, and I'll be clearing 400k, though I was caught off guard when he saw a financial email and told him 120k. He freaked out and had a minor emotional meltdown, because he realized he would never be the provider, and I told him to get over it. Not a huge surprise to anyone, but we talked it out, and a big reason he reacted badly is because he's in a bad spot. We live really rural, and $15 an hour in a farm store is basically the top pay without a major change of life on his part. Moving away, somehow changing jobs when there are no real jobs, or winning the lottery, etc. The stress got to him, and he didn't react well. He apologized, and our relationship limped along for a few more weeks, but he started making little digs at my career saying stuff like how he can't believe I make so much money for silly projects, that it's wild I make more money than a doctor when I'm not saving lives, things like that. Typing them out, they sound like mild nitpicks, and I certainly have a love-hate relationship with my art when I'm in the weeds of it, but I didn't like the vibe that was coming from him. It felt resentful. Instead of being happy that he had a girlfriend who was doing well, it felt like he saw it all as a failure on himself. Like, I kind of think my future is not great because AI is coming for my job, but if I somehow do even better, then how would I explain it to him without him freaking out? I broke it off and he didn't seem that upset, so I guess it was a good call. Though, suspiciously, one of the local churches has contacted me for money for their local charity. 
They seem to know that I'm a high owner, even though I've kept it private. I even use a registered agent for my LLC. So I think he's been telling people tales. It's a small town, so that is fun. Anyways, thanks for all the advice on the last post, and for Christ's sake, I don't do OnlyFans. OP on turning down the church's request for donations. Lol, no. I don't attend church anymore, but I don't think I could bring myself to say that I worshipped Satan even as a joke. Instead, I was really enthusiastic about the charity and offered to give $20. The church admin lady said stuff like, those who have the means must give. And I pretended like I don't know what she was talking about. We went back and forth, and after about 15 minutes, I reluctantly got talked up to $50. I probably sound cheap AF, but I don't even go to that church. Maybe they should ask their own parishioners for their projects. In the comments, someone says, Good for you. I don't understand why it's such an issue if one side earns more than the other. Be happy for your partner that they do well and support them. I think you dodged a bullet by leaving, because if he can't support you there, then he'd probably be making problems in other things later on as well. Good luck for your future. You dodged a bullet. He's acting like a child, he is bitter and throwing a tantrum. He's definitely too immature for an adult relationship. And yes, I think he told people and it's gotten back to the church. Block him and say no to the church. Nasty little man says, Oh wow, I can't believe a church that she doesn't go to had the audacity to call her and ask her for money. And I can't believe she gave them money still. Maybe OP is a bigger person than I am, but is it just me or is that super scummy of the church? Have plushy will talk replies, like honestly, I would have weaponized it. Started crying, you're the fifth group this week calling me for money. I'm a single woman who is self-employed. I don't even know you. You don't even know me. I don't know why you're all calling. It's interrupting my work, and if I don't work, my business will... Will? And then sobbed. Really cried hard. Keep on saying, I don't know why you keep calling me for money, and I'm self-employed and I can't focus on my job. I have so many people I need to pay. <laughs> I love that. Basically, imply the boyfriend is telling lies, so OP is harassed by people for money that she doesn't have. Make him the pariah. If you give a church a cookie, it'll end with you on the street so a vicar can get a higher quality of life. Well, uh... All's well that ends well in this story, huh, guys? I think there was, you know, a glimmer of hope in that update that they could have worked this out together and been able to work this one out as just a big bump in the road on the long journey of life together. But as it stands, it was and still is a gigantic incompatibility between the two of them. That was just something that he couldn't get over. And instead of being more humble about it and accepting he goes and tells the town because he knows that she wants her own privacy and he's bitter. So what is a scorned, by their own scorning of themselves, bitter person going to do? They're going to go and do everything that you, as the private person, do not want. Screw him for doing that. He's earned no sympathy here. I hope he stews in the sadness and misery of his own creating now. Because he could have been a better person and turned the other cheek and been accepting of it like everyone else is. Or so many people are, obviously not everyone else, but no, he chose the worst thing to do. So screw him, go find someone that actually values you OP and won't, you know, throw jabs at you non-stop like he did. And as always, thank you for sharing your story with us. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next post is by user SweetSyrup9739, and it's titled, Am I the asshole for becoming indifferent towards my wife after discovering her affair? My, 30 male, wife, 34 female, and I have been together for 8 years. Five of them married. I thought we were the kind of couple that could tell each other any problem. I love her deeply, and always believed that she felt the same way about me. Like many other couples, we had our ups and downs but I never thought that it could lead to infidelity. Four months ago, I started noticing changes in her behavior. She was more distant, always glued to the phone, and avoiding our conversations. You know the typical thing about a cheating person. Well, 
one day, I came across a message on her phone that confirmed what I feared the most. She was seeing someone else. It was like a punch in the stomach. I felt anger, sadness, and an overwhelming sense of betrayal. But instead of confronting her right away, I decided to wait. My main reason was to protect myself in a possible divorce. If I was going to face this situation, I wanted to have solid evidence. So I spent the next two months gathering messages, photos, and anything else that I could use if things got legally difficult. During those two months, I feigned normality while the pain piled up. I watched her act like everything was fine, and with each passing day, my feelings for her faded. The love I once felt was replaced by indifference. If anyone says that love for someone doesn't go away, well, it's not entirely true. When I finally gathered all the evidence, I confronted her. I showed her everything I knew. And although she tried to deny it at first, she finally admitted that she had been having an affair. She said it was a mistake, that she still loved me, and that she wanted to work things out. But by then, I didn't feel anything anymore. I didn't scream, I didn't cry, I didn't even get angry. I told her that it was okay, that we could get a divorce, and that we could each move on with our lives. My lack of emotion baffled her. She said my indifference was cold and cruel, and that if I had truly loved her, I should have fought to save our marriage, which was ironic coming from her. But the truth was that I did love her very much, only that after two months of living with the betrayal in silence, I just didn't care. Am I the asshole here for becoming indifferent towards my wife after discovering her affair? The real one, Mexican 2, says, not the asshole. I remember this. The only reason she's sorry is because she got caught. Ironic she wants to fight for the marriage after getting dicked down for two months. Pineapple Pie Slice says she wants him to fight for the marriage after she's been getting dicked down for months by another dude. Yeah, <laughs> no. Thanks, but no thanks. Hot Monica says exactly. If she's been involved with someone else for months and still expects him to fight for the marriage, it's clear that she's not fully invested. That's not fair to him at all. Well-earned nihilism says, not the asshole. You are not the asshole for becoming emotionally detached after discovering your wife's affair. Your feelings are a natural response to a profound betrayal of trust. While your wife may have hoped for a different reaction, you are not obligated to fight for a relationship that she damaged through infidelity. Your decision to protect yourself legally was prudent. Moving forward, focus on healing and what's best for you. Consider seeking counseling to process your emotions and the end of your marriage in a healthy way. I always love this specific reaction uh, to cheating partners getting found out. They're like, oh, if you knew I was cheating this whole time, why didn't you stop it as soon as you found out I was cheating? It's like you don't care about me. <laughs> if you cared, you would have uh, confronted me straight away and cut the shit. <laughs> And another personal favorite, oh, I would have given you the benefit of the doubt if I found out about this, you know? I would have forgiven the cheating. Me, as the cheater, can morally grandstand in a reverse hypothetical where you're cheating. I would be completely okay with it, so you should forgive me. What dumpster fire are they pulling all of this audacity out of? Because <laughs> point me in the direction of that one, I'm gonna need some. I too would love to live in such grand delusion. But yeah, um, not the asshole for becoming indifferent towards your wife after discovering her affair. She is filth, she is trash, she is scum of the earth. You deserve better, OP. Um, get her out of your life ASAP so she can go be miserable with her affair partner. Because she's talking nonsense, she's talking absolute garbaggio. And now, onto the updates. Wow! Honestly, I didn't expect the number of messages I've received in the last few hours. I apologize for not responding to the comments, but rest assured, I am reading them. My inbox is filled with hundreds of replies, and I'm truly surprised by the support and the number of people who took the time to share their experiences and opinions. At first, I felt overwhelmed reading so many stories from people who have gone through similar situations, some even worse. I never imagined that so many people could relate to what I'm going through. I guess it's eye-opening to see that infidelity is more common than I thought, and yes, there were also comments that made me question if I disconnected emotionally too quickly. 
but after reflecting, I believe I did what I needed to do to protect myself. Some people told me that I should have tried to save the marriage, but the truth is, I don't think I could have. The betrayal felt like a wall that went up between us, and once I saw everything clearly, there was no way to go back to what we had. It's not that I don't want to be loved or love, it's just that that chapter with her is over for me. Does that make me cruel? I don't know, but it's my truth. Who is gaslighting OP to think that him wanting to leave a marriage and not having love for his partner after they cheated on him makes him cruel? What? what? Who genuinely believes that? What garbage human beings are telling him that? One of the most impactful things was seeing how many people are stuck in relationships where trust has been broken and they don't know how to move forward. To everyone who asked how I'm doing it, I don't have a definitive answer. For me, it was a slow process, day by day, watching the love fade until it was just gone. There were also some messages from people in my wife's position, those who had made mistakes but genuinely wanted to make things right. It made me think, what would have happened if I confronted her before my feelings faded? Maybe things would have turned out differently, but honestly, I don't think so. Once trust is broken like that, it's nearly impossible to go back to what it was. Anyway, I want to thank everyone who shared their words, whether they were supportive or critical. You've given me a lot to think about, and I'm grateful for that. I'm processing all of this little by little, but if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that, for the first time in months, I feel like I can breathe and look forward without the weight of what happened. Thanks again. Gameboy330 says, Also, sorry for the other commenters blaming you for the affair. It's amazing how they always blame the victim. No Spanking Aloud says, He's a dude, and there's a subspecies of humans on Reddit that will literally blame a man for anything and everything, even if they weren't born when it happened. It also amazes me how people tell him that he should have tried to save the marriage. Some people have too much self-respect to just swallow the hurt and move past it as well. And I laugh when others tell him they've made mistakes like his wife, because cheating is not a mistake, and the moment someone minimizes it to a simple mistake, they're not going to be a trustworthy partner because they truly don't get how much pain and hurt that they intentionally inflicted on the person they supposedly loved. Amen. Say it louder for the people in the back. For me, there's no coming back from that one. You know, that trust is gone. Move on. Find someone else that is not going to disrespect you like that. And don't let people tell you that you're a bad person for not trying to fix that bridge with your cheating wife. If you want to get out of there, that's more than acceptable. And now, onto the latest updates. Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know, I'm the guy whose wife cheated on him with someone else, and he became indifferent. I'm doing this mini-update because many of you asked me to give one, but I'm lazy today, so don't expect a long one. Well, for starters, the divorce is in progress. The notice was delivered to her at one of her friend's houses, since the house we live in is mine, from my mother's side. Moving on to the divorce, she didn't take it well, and called me to tell me that she would contest it, that we weren't getting a divorce. I didn't say anything. I just hung up because it bothered me to hear her voice at that moment. I read comments that say indifference is a way to protect yourself from strong emotions, and they were right. After a couple of days, I started thinking about the time invested in my marriage, and I really got angry. For her, eight years of relationship was nothing to open her legs to another jerk. For those curious, her lover is someone older, maybe 40 or 47, and he has a wife and a kid. I don't care if the idiot has a heart attack or something, my soon-to-be ex and that guy are just trash that came out of the same landfill. Sorry. I was getting angry as I was writing, so I took some time to calm down. Back to my soon-to-be ex. I really don't care if she decides to contest the divorce. She is just making things harder for herself, since all of our assets are separate, including the house where I live. For the moment, that's all I can share with you. Thanks for your advice, and to all of you who commented that I should work things out with her, screw you. You don't decide for others, you just show that you have problems. I'd rather divorce a thousand times than to stay with a traitor with no morals. Artistic Risk says, Tell the wife of her lover, not the asshole. good luck on your divorce. She's a cheating piece of shit. 
Tara Jo says, yes, this. Who knows who else the affair partner might have been hooking up with, and who knows what he might have brought home from one of those hookups. And cute Kylie says, absolutely. It's not just about the betrayal, but also the risk she exposed you to by being with someone who might have other partners. Staying indifferent and moving on is definitely the safer choice. And I'm going to say absolutely do that, you know. Incredible amounts of audacity that she is contesting, even though she's cheating with another married man who she doesn't know isn't cheating with other people, uh, you know, and exposing everyone to diseases. Disgusting. How do we know that she's not cheating with other people either? There is absolutely no trust. She is scum, he is scum. Dump him and run, OP. Again, you deserve so much better. And thank you for sharing your story with us. I very much appreciate it and wish nothing but the best for you going forward. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.